I am Brett from CaperCartridges.com here at the shop today in beautiful downtown Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And I was asked to do this video about shooting the reproduction rifle musket, specifically the, the relatively recent reproductions that are coming out of Italy. And if you want to shoot them with the historically correct style of ammo, so for instance, this is a 61 Springfield, and it would shoot the, the U.S. Civil War mini ball um, with six degrees of powder and all of that. But a lot of times, these reproduction Italian rifles struggle to shoot accurately with the original style of ammunition. So maybe I'll be able to help with that if you're struggling to get your rifle to shoot the historic ammo well, uh, or maybe I won't. Uh, often customers will call me and they'll say, hey, I bought your ammo, it's great stuff, but my rifle can't shoot it. It's keyholing, uh, it's, uh, it's all over the place. And the first question I ask them is, what are you shooting, what do you have? And nine times out of 10 they say, oh, it's an army sport, it's a Euro Arms, a Chapa, a Petersoli. And that breaks my heart because now I have to tell them, your Italian reproduction rifle musket has the wrong rifling. Uh, with very few exceptions, reproduction rifles have a fundamentally different form of rifling than what the originals had. So what did the originals have? Let's start there. Uh, original rifle muskets were developed 1840s, 1850s, uh, the result of extensive experiments, years of experiments, trial and error, and they tried everything. Uh, number of grooves, the depth of grooves, the rate of twist, gaining twist, uh, different bore sizes, all different bullet shapes and sizes and weights, and all different powder charges, 1F powder, 3F powder, 60 grains, 80 grains. They tried everything. And over these years of trial and error experiments, uh, it's interesting, both the U.S. and the British reached the same conclusion. And we concluded that the best form of rifling for a rifle musket, so a muzzle-loading rifle musket, is uh, about a 58 caliber bore, of course 577 for the infield, with three rifling grooves, a slow twist, one twist in six feet, and rifling grooves that are shallow at the muzzle, but they get increasingly deeper towards the breech. So this is called progressive depth rifling. And historically, the rifling, the grooves are 16 thousandths of an inch deep right here at the breech, and they're 5 thousandths of an inch deep at the muzzle. Uh, U.S. rifle muskets, like the Model 1855, always had progressive depth rifling. The British were a little later. They went to it in 1859 when they updated their ammunition. Uh, but these were all military service rifles, so they're, they're meant to engage targets out 600 yards or more, so you need a very heavy charge of powder to launch a bullet out to those long ranges, and if you think about it, that's the whole point of having a rifle in the first place, right, is to hit targets out at uh, longer distances. So in a rifle musket with the military charge, uh, heavy charge, 60 grains of powder behind a 500 grain bullet, you have a sudden instant acceleration of the bullet. Uh, and so that bullet skirt will expand in the barrel, but it's going out the barrel whether that bullet is gripping the rifling or not. Um, and if it's going to spin with the rifling, it needs to grip something fast because it, the bullet's going from here to about here and then it's expanded. And if it's not gripping rifling, it's gonna keep flying out the barrel. So. The deeper grooves at the breech give the bullet something to grab onto, something to bite into as it is expanding. So it fills those deeper grooves. And uh, this system of rifling with the slower twist and the deeper grooves at the breech prevent the bullet from uh, what's called stripping. And in 19th century uh, rifle terms, a bullet that just goes down a rifle barrel without engaging the rifling and spinning is said to have stripped over the grooves. Uh, and you won't have any accuracy. The bullet's just going to tumble. Uh, awful accuracy. You'll, you'll keyhole at best. Um, so progressive depth rifling gives the lead somewhere to go when that bullet expands. And then also, as the bullet is proceeding down the barrel, it is being squeezed down because the grooves are getting shallower gradually as it moves up. 
and the lead has nowhere else to go. So even if it just barely gets started into the grooves in the breech, as it moves down, those grooves are gripping the bullet more and more so that the bullet is absolutely forced. It has nowhere else to go but in those grooves, and that's what gives it the spin, stabilizes the bullet. And the result is very good accuracy. Now, those were original rifles. What do the modern reproduction rifles have? Uh, let's get one key exception out of the way, and that is uh, reproduction Parker Hale rifles. Parker Hale was a company based in the UK. Uh, they reproduced rifles, uh, including the P53 Enfield, uh, but they used the original specs. Rifles with serial numbers under about 16,000 have the historic style correct rifling. They are progressively depth rifled barrels. But virtually all other Italian rifle musket reproductions have what's called constant depth rifling. That's where the rifling grooves are the same depth from the breech to the muzzle. So all the way down, the depth does not change. And they've never attempted to misrepresent that. They've always said, yeah, our guns have constant depth rifling. And it tends to be very shallow. Uh, Petter sold his website used to say that their grooves were four thousandths of an inch deep uh, and i can't find that on their site now maybe it's there i just might not have seen it but i'm i'm almost shocked uh, at how shallow some of these reproduction italian barrels can be like when i feel for the rifle i can barely feel it it's almost uh, smooth bore and a lot of people have pin gauged their barrels and they say they're four thousandths of an inch deep or often a lot less and the Italians today are uh, using modern industrial rifling methods to make the barrels for the rifle muskets. Uh, that's opposed to historically when the rifling was cut and there was a machine with cams that would automatically cut uh, the grooves to the correct depth. It took a long time, very good rifling, but it took a long time. And today, uh, the Italians use uh, broached rifling, which is a common industrial method uh, today. They also will button finish the rifling. Uh, broached rifling is still cut rifling, uh, but instead of a machine making many, many passes and each time the blade slowly taking one slice out, Brooches have a row of blades. So what you can do with this is you can run that brooch down the barrel one time and your rifle is done. Each uh, blade is slightly larger than the one in front of it so that they, they're all cutting in succession. So for mass production, all you gotta do is push this thing down the barrel one time and you are done. So that's, uh, that's ideal in the industrial age. Uh, Petter Soli also runs a button through the barrel and that will iron out the chatter marks that the brooches tend to leave. And brooches, simply, they cannot produce progressive depth rifling. Uh, they can only make constant depth rifling. And they can't cut grooves that are, are very deep because, again, they're only doing one pass. You can only remove so much metal taking one pass through the, through the barrel. And the brooches are also very expensive. They're probably the most expensive part of the entire process. So they get reused many times and they get resharpened as they start to wear out. Sharpening them will remove metal, which means that that brooch will cut shallower and shallower rifling until finally it gets worn out and uh, it's not cutting the grooves deep enough and they have to invest in a new brooch. Uh, so this rifle, for instance, this is a Model 1861 Springfield uh, made by Army Sport. This was my first black powder rifle back in like 2004, so I was in my teens. Uh, and starting reenacting and I bought this and in the box it came with the manufacturer's recommendations for loading and they said uh, the recommended load is a 57 caliber patched round ball and 90 grains of black powder. There's no mention of the historic Minier ball that this rifle was actually designed to use back in 1861 and patched round ball will work very well in constant depth rifling because the the patched bullet fills the rifling from the moment it's tapped into the muzzle so it doesn't there's nothing has to expand so it will follow constant depth rifling uh, well it doesn't expand it's a tight fit and it can shoot great but the question is will your italian repro rifle musket 
uh, with the constant depth rifling actually shoot the historic ammunition that these rifles were designed to shoot? And the answer to that is maybe. Uh, in my experience from all the shooting I have done over decades, from running the School of Musketry for many years uh, to the, the Imperial Valley Live Fire to uh, shooting with my friends, Sometimes Italian repo rifles will just manage to shoot minis pretty well. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, I, I have even seen instances where there's two rifles from the same maker, the same model, but they're about a year apart. One of them will shoot the historic ammo great, and one of them won't, uh, probably because of the brooch. One was made when the brooch was new, and then the other was made when it had been sharpened several times, and the rifling now is a lot shallower. And I'm not accusing the, uh, the Italian gun makers of any false advertising, uh, but this is an 1861 Springfield only externally. Um, it, it looks like one from the outside, but under the hood, there's something totally different going on here that is not what was in a real Model 1861 Springfield. So imagine for a moment that uh, a company came out and they said, we are going to make a authentic, realistic reproduction of the 1963 split rear window Corvette Stingray. And you go buy one because that's really cool. I mean, you, you can, there's a reproduction that you can actually afford. You can go out and drive it. So you go... You go down, you buy it, and you're real excited, and then you, you pop open the hood and you look inside, and instead of a 327 cubic inch V8, there's a Wankel rotary engine sitting in there. <laughs> you can drive this thing around, yeah, you can start it up and drive it, but the experience is going to be completely unlike that of driving around a real 63 split rear window <laughs> Corvette Stingray. And that's the, that's the situation uh, here with, with these rifles. Can you really call it a reproduction Springfield or a reproduction Corvette Stingray if it just looks like one on the outside, but where it really matters, the, the heartbeat of the thing, the thing that makes it what it is, either a Corvette Stingray or a rifle, is not what was originally there, and not even close, to be honest. Um, so that's... That's where we're at with the, the Italian reproductions. So if you're still hanging on to this discussion by your fingernails, you might be wondering, what can I do to get my repro with constant depth rifling to actually shoot? Now, the North-South Skirmish Association has coaxed some really surprising accuracy out of Italian repro rifles. And in fact, uh, the, the rifles are often produced to NSSA standards, you know, they're NSSA approved, so literally recommended by the NSSA, which is somewhat disappointing, but, you know, that, that is what it is. Uh, but generally speaking, the NSSA does not use uh, the historic military load, so skirmishers go out uh, and, and they're, they're shooting at 50 yards, so there's no need for that heavy 60 grain powder charge, because you don't have to send the bullet out to military ranges, you just got to get it out to 50 yards. And most NSSA shooters tend to use a, a real tight fitting bullet. And I say most because I said all before and then I had a guy get upset and he says, well, I don't use a real tight fitting bullet. So like, you're the exception. Most of them say use a very tight fitting bullet that's only one or maybe two thousandths of an inch under your bore size. Um, and the, the NSSA also generally doesn't use the historic types of bullets. Uh, they use modernized and improved bullets. You know, the, the Lee Target Mini, the Lyman Wad Cutter, the Rapine Trash Can Mini, the Steak Busters, Chicken Bullets, you know, <laughs> real bullets, R-E-A-L, which is rifling engraved at loading. Um, so th that bullet doesn't even need to expand because it's it, like a patched round ball. It is engraved at the rifling. So with, with these improved bullets and really, really light charges that don't massively accelerate the bullet like the military low did, um, you can coax the bullet to follow that shallow groove rifling. And you can get these barrels to shoot extremely accurately. Um, you know, the NSSA, there's no one else on earth shooting these guns with more consistent accuracy than they do. 
but that's nothing like the ammunition they were using during the Civil War. Um, so, so what? If you've got one of these rifles, you might as well try using the historic load. Uh, because sometimes the black powder gods will smile on us and a minier bullet will take the rifling. Uh, you should try to use the purest lead that you can. And uh, constant depth rifles tend to like finer grain powder, like 3F instead of 1F powder. Um, and tragically, uh, constant depth rifling just does not like paper patched bullets, like the infield style bullets with the greased paper patch. That just wants to slide right over the shallow grooves, um, and you get you get generally bad results out of constant depth rifling. And that breaks my heart, because I'm an infield cartridge guy. But if you want to shoot a historic military, uh, a Civil War load out to two or 300 yards, and you're not really interested in shooting a 40 grain charge behind a chicken bullet at 50 yards, uh, don't bother writing to Pedersoli and getting them to change, um, because even if they did, if they went to progressive depth, they'd probably double the cost of their rifles. And their customers seem to be, you know, perfectly happy with their 63 Corvettes with Wankel rotary engines in them. Um, you know, shooting their trash can minis at, uh, at clay pigeons at 50 yards. You know, the largest rifle musket shooting organization in the world uh, endorses and approves these constant depth rifled barrels. So the Pedersoli is not going to change. And that unfortunately leaves you with about three options. So option A is to have your barrel drilled out and lined with a progressive depth liner. And there are people doing that. Uh, my Lorenz, which had been bored out smooth, uh, has a lined barrel by Bobby Hoyt. And that thing is now a tack driver. It shoots everything. Another option is to have a new barrel made completely. Uh, there's a couple people doing that too. Uh, Daniel Whitaker made the barrel on my P53, and that thing is a tack driver. And your third option is to use an original rifle. Um, rifles were meant to be shot. Now that said, originals are getting up there 160, 170 years, and those wooden stocks are getting older and older. So you can do it if you can find one in, in shootable condition. Uh, yeah, it's going to shoot great. But you just got to remember it's original. It's 170 years old. And uh, be a little gentle with it. And I am very sorry if uh, you've watched this far and you're disappointed. Like I didn't have a, a secret solution for you for how to get constant depth rifling to use the military ammo well. Uh, and once a month or so, I'll get a customer, they'll call me, and they're all very excited. I just bought a Pedersoli Springfield, and I'm getting into black powder, and I want to buy some bullets. And I have to be honest with them. I, I, I have to say to moderate your expectations. You know, your rifle simply does not have the right type of rifling to shoot the historically correct Civil War style ammunition. And I get it. That's super frustrating. You go out and you spend... $1,800 on a new gun, um, and it's it's basically a Hawken barrel on the inside, and, and you can't shoot the ammo that you wanted to shoot uh, out of it. So uh, that said, I am sorry to end kind of a little bit on a depressing note, but there there is hope. Uh, you can line your barrel, uh, buy a new barrel, find an original, or... There's always the chance that the black powder gods will be merciful and they will smile down upon you and your Italian barrel will manage to spin a mini ball. Well, I hope that was useful to you. If you uh, like this, I would appreciate uh, a like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.